Welcome little scientists, it's Miss Gisa, and I have my horseshoe crab with me because we are going to continue learning about horseshoe crabs this week. And the story I have today is called Crab Moon, written by Ruth Horowitz and illustrated by Kate Keisler. This summer, Daniel turned seven. His family rented a cottage at the beach. They arrived on the weekend of the full moon. The full moon in June brings the high tide of the horseshoe crabs, said his mother. I saw them laying eggs on this beach when I was your age. Does it still happen, Daniel asked. Every summer, his mother answered, horseshoe crabs have been coming ashore for hundreds of millions of years. They're older than the dinosaurs. Can I see them, Daniel asked. You'll have to get up in the middle of the night. I'll come and wake you, she promised. That night, the fat round face of the full moon wavered on the surface of the water. The path felt cool under Daniel's feet. As the beam of their flashlight swept to the beach, he drew a sharp breath. Everywhere they looked, horseshoe crabs crowded and pushed like restless cobblestones. Under the sandy shuffle of the surf, he could hear the clack of the crab's shielded backs bumping and scraping together. Near Daniel's feet, a large crab dug in the sand. That's a female, his mother said. The smaller crab on her back is a male. She laid her eggs in the hole, and now she's pulling him across so he can fertilize them. They watched. As the female crab swung herself around, still carrying her mate, she made her way back to the water. Little by little, the tide receded. The crabs returned to the sea. Daniel's feet sank into the sand as he and his mother climbed back up to bed. In the morning, Daniel raced back to the beach. The tide was low now. The crabs were gone. Curly black seaweed was strewn on the sand like streamers left over from a party. Then Daniel saw one last lonely crab marooned upside down. She looked dead and dry. He found a piece of driftwood and gently nudged her. One leg moved. The other crabs had scratched their tracks in the sand where they had swung themselves around and gone home. How could this crab follow unless someone turned her over? Daniel reached out one nervous finger. The tail felt stiff, but not sharp. He carefully lifted the crab. As her body left the ground, her claws started to snap. Daniel put her down fast. Then he took a deep breath and reached for her again. This time, he quickly turned the crab over and gently set her down. Daniel grinned. Barnacles and slipper shells covered the crab's back like jewels on a crown. She set off down the beach, pausing and pulling her shell through the sand, quiet as a queen. Slowly and grandly, the crab pulled herself forward. Stepping and pausing, Daniel's feet felt their way into the bay. He followed until she disappeared. Then he gave the water one last long look and whispered to his horseshoe crab, see you next summer. And then in the back, there are more facts about horseshoe crabs. Now, let's go do an activity. All right, little scientists, let's go over the parts of a horseshoe crab. So a horseshoe crab has many different parts and uh, it's a really interesting creature. This is called a three-part card activity. And the reason why it's called three-part cards is because there are three parts. There's the main card that has the picture and the word. So horseshoe crab, that's the whole horseshoe crab that's colored. So you would find the picture of the horseshoe crab. And basically, what is on this side you want to create here so the picture and then the word goes on the bottom horseshoe crab 
so there you have it. Now, if an adult is helping you, make sure they mix them up so that you have to actually look really closely at the pictures and the words. All right, so the next one is hinge. The hinge connects the prosoma to the opisthosoma and it allows the horseshoe crab to bend. There's also another hinge here which connects the telson to the apothosoma. So you can actually color both hinges. And then we'll look for the other hinge here. Here it is. See? The same parts are colored, so you know that these go together. And then we need to look for the word hinge, which starts with a H. So you'll look through all of your labels. All right, next one is the mouth. The mouth is right in between the legs there. So let's look for the mouth. There it is. It's at the center of the prosoma and it's surrounded by the legs. Let's look for the word mouth. It starts with a mmm sound. It only has how many word how many letters? One, two, three, four, five letters. Oh, here it is. Mouth. All right. The next part of the horseshoe crab is called the prosoma. And this is the largest part of the horseshoe crab. It's this top part right there. That's called the prosoma. It kind of looks like a horseshoe which is why, where the horseshoe crab gets its name. This is where most of the organs are, like the brain, the heart, the mouth, and the nervous system. Let's find it in our cards. Oh, there it is, the prosoma. And then we're gonna look for the word. It starts with a p, p. That's right, a P, prosoma. All right. Next, let's look for the book gills. You see that right there? Book gills. The gills of the horseshoe crab are arranged like the pages of a book, and that's why they're called book gills. The five pairs of gills absorb oxygen from the water and are also used as the paddles. I just love horseshoe crabs. I think they are just so interesting. So where are our book gills? There they are. There they are, see? And then we'll look for a b sound. It's hiding. There it is. All right, next, the legs. Do you guys see that? Let's take a look. Wow, so neat. See those legs? So they're first five pairs of legs of the horseshoe crab help it move around. The last pair pushes and clears sediment when it burrows, because you know it likes to burrow in the sand. The legs also move food to the mouth after crushing it. So let's find the legs here. There we go. And here's the word, legs. All right, the opisthosoma. Oh my goodness, that's a hard word to say, opisthosoma. So this right here is the opisthosoma, right under the prosoma. And this is where the abdomen Right, this is the abdomen. And you can find the gills, we talked about that, the book gills. 
and it's attached to the prosoma by the hinge. And you can see there's spines on the side of the apothosoma. Let's find the word ah, ah, starts with an O. All right, the telson or the tail. That's this part right here. That's an easy part to find because it sticks out, right? It sticks out far. Here it is. And the telson is attached to the abdomen and it helps to steer. And also if the horseshoe crab Sometimes horseshoe crabs end up on their back. That's pretty common. So it can right itself if it gets inverted like that. It does not contain poison. Lots of people think it's poisonous, but it does not contain poison. All right, the next body parts are the eyes. So the horseshoe crab, actually has a total of 10 eyes. So there are seven on the top side, two underneath, so that would be nine, and the 10th eye is along the telson right there. Now, the boy horseshoe crabs have slightly larger eyeballs than the, the girl horseshoe crabs, the female horseshoe crabs. So you only see here eight, right? Because two of them on, are on the underside. You're only seeing the ones that are on top. So don't get confused. Okay, let's find the other eyes. There we go. And eyes start with the letter E. All right, the next Picture, as a picture of the movable spines, I'll show you here. Do you see these spines on either side? Those are called the movable spines. And the movable spines of the horseshoe crab stick out and help protect it. Different kinds of horseshoe crabs have different number of spines. So it all depends on the type of horseshoe crabs because there are different species. And here we go with the movable spines. All right. You're seeing the whole top part, the whole hard shell on the top colored in. And this is called a carapace, just like the turtle shell is also called a carapace. Um, so this is the outer shell of the horseshoe crab. It's made of chitin, which is the material that makes up most of the exoskeletons of arthropods. And carapace starts with a k, k sound, which is the letter C. All right, and the next part, this is also a difficult word to say. This is the chelicere, and it's the first pair of appendages or legs that handles food and sends it to the horseshoe crab's mouth and bristles. So it's the first pair of legs the top and it starts with a ch sound ch makes the ch sound and last but not least we also have one of these body parts it is where we eliminate our waste it's the anus and the anus is right down here And the anus is also where the horseshoe crab eliminates its waste. I hope you learned a lot about horseshoe crabs. They are one of my favorite creatures. And we'll see you again next time. Thank you for joining me today. Remember to like and subscribe to support our channel.